Praise the Lord this morning. Welcome to Sunday's uh, message. Today I would like to talk to you with and share with you from the life of Elisha, the firebrand prophet who was full of fire in his life and God did not let a single word fall which he spoke. God fulfilled everything that he said. Yet, in his life there was a time when he was discouraged. He started on a very strong spiritual high when God answered him miraculously and ignited the altar soaked with water during the time of famine and gave him a victory. But what happens is that, that he had a time of fear, flight and discouragement in his life. All because of the threat given by the Queen Jezebel and this prophet had to run for his life. And what happened is that he went up to Mount uh, Moriah, okay, and what he did? He had an encounter with God. When you and I are discouraged, God gives us comfort and He touches us. Today I would like to talk to you on the touch of God. And I, since I don't have much of a time, in very short exhortation, I am just sharing these points with you and talk to you. Here, in verse 1 and 2, we see that, verse 2, So Jezebel sent messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Actually on Mount Carmel what he had done? He had won a victory and killed 450 prophets. In fact 800 prophets of false gods of Baal and Ashura. And he killed them by sword. This man called Elijah, God had answered him with fire. And now, instead of him being patted on the back, instead of him being appreciated for the rain that came after the drought of three and a half years, what happens is that the Queen Jezebel, the wicked queen, sends this message to him. And therefore, he runs for his life. I runs and he comes under a broom tree and sits down. Tired, exhausted, hungry, totally drained out and he is, says to God, God, it's enough of serving you. If this is what I get for serving you, God, I do not want to be part of it. Please, Lord, take my life. Take my life, God. In reality, if we really wanted to die, why did he run away? From uh, Samaria to Judah, then to Bathsheba. Why he is that? And he says, God, take my life. And then goes up to sleep, tired. And then comes God sends one of his angels, the angel of the Lord, he comes there and does something. Let's read verse 5. What does it say? In verse 5, let me read it from verse 4 actually. While he himself went a day's journey into the desert, he came to the broom tree, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said, take my life, 
I am no better than my ancestors. So here he is, he is praying to God, take my life Lord, I am no better than other prophets, my ancestors. And then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. We see that he was tired of living for God. He was tired of being around wicked people, around the evil people of his time. And what happened? He slept under this broom tree thinking, next I'll get up in the heaven and meet God. Reality. That's what he thought. But the reality of life is different. God also has a humor. And then God sends an angel who wakes him up. And I would call, but first of all, this touch. An angel touched him and said, get up and eat. This is a gracious touch. God saw his condition, his discouragement. And God provided for him food. God took care of his physical need. He gave him food. What a gracious touch of an angel of the Lord that was there upon the life of Elijah. Elijah gets up and says what? In verse 6, he looked around and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate, drank, and then lay down again. You see, God had gracious touch over, over his life. What God did? God had compassion on him. God knew his immediate need. His immediate need was what? Food and water. He was exhausted, tired from journey, tired after being, winning the victory for God. When you and I are in the spiritual realm and we are victorious and on the spiritual high, there comes a prick in the bone, in the balloon. And we go, boom, out. And we are all over, discouraged, disheartened. We don't know what to do. And that's the time God touches us with His grace, with His mercy, with His love. And this was what kind of touch? It was a practical touch. God knew. Practically God provided for him food. It says here in verse 6, He looked around and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. Beautiful. Like a cake of bread, I mean maybe in our Indian context, a roti, a chapati was being made, being cooked. And a jar of water, remember, just the famine had been over, rain had come. And there was water. A God gives him, gives him a jar of water to drink. And what happens? This I call a practical touch. God was being practical with him. He was tired, hungry, emotionally drained, fearful. God saw and God did what? Gave him food and water. God gave him food and water. He saw his need, his physical need, his emotional need. He saw and he knew that he was great. Therefore God gave him food and water. God is, our God is a practical God. He provides us for us. When you and I depend on him, and when you and I are discouraged, God gives us, He gives us practical touch. When I teach sometimes in the, uh, in the Bible college or even to uh, children or youth, I say, you know what? This was a heavenly restaurant we given to Him. And then we see that it was a personal touch. 
My third point is, it was a personal touch. Let's read verse 7. The angel of the Lord came back second time and touched him and said, Get up, eat, for the journey is too much for you. It was a personal touch. God is a God who is interested in us, in us personally. He is interested in our personal needs. He is interested in us personally. Our personal well-being. That's what God is interested in. It was a personal touch. He touched him. The heavenly restaurant was back. The heavenly restaurant was back. The angel of the Lord touched him. Told him, get up. Eat and drink. For the journey is too much for you. God knows our situations. Our future. And what we are supposed to do. God knows that. And therefore, God understands our personal well-being. He is really interested in it. He does not leave us where we are. But He deals with our situations. God does not leave us where we are, but He deals with our situation. Wherever, whatever kind of situation we are in, God deals with us. God deals with us and looks at a situation and does what? He gives us grace. His grace is sufficient for me. That's what Paul says. He deals with our situation. He knows and gives us enough of his strength. And then it was a purposeful touch. The second part of verse number 7 and verse 8. What does it say? Second part. Get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up, ate and ate and drank, strengthened by the food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There was a purpose in providing for him. God, when he provided food, water, and God touched him, there was a purpose for the life of Elijah. There was a purpose for him. God had a purpose. What was the purpose? He had a plan and purpose for his life. That he should go up to the mountain of God, Mount Horeb. For 40 days and 40 nights he was to travel. Well, God has a plan, a purpose for your life and my life. And he gives us the strength to carry on, to move on from where we are to where he wants us to be. He was under us, what we call, broom tree, having pity party, he was under a broom tree, all drained out, no strength, discouraged, fearful. That's what his situation is. I don't know what your situation is today, where you stand today, but God has a purpose for your life and a plan for your life and God had the provision as we saw, it is gracious for you and for me. It's a practical touch that God wants to give in your life. And He is interested in you personally. God is interested in us personally. And then He has a purpose for our life. And wherever we are, in whatever situation, even during this time of lockdown, I do understand there are times when we do not have food and water. Or many people are suffering. Because of no jobs or no salaries coming home. What happens is this, that God has a plan and purpose. And what he does, he takes us from where we are to where he is, where he wants us to be. 
and there for 40 days and 40 nights Elijah traveled, traveled and traveled till he reached the mountain of God and on that mountain God had a plan and purpose for him God gave him new ministries God gave him new work to do God gave him a spiritual understanding Many times we complicate things around us, but we need to understand that God, our God is a God who is interested in us. The touch of God, our gracious touch, our practical touch, our personal touch, our purposeful touch, that's what God is going to do for you and for me. Are we willing to accept His touch? And His grace in our life during these hard times that we as people of God face. As the world faces this difficult time, are we willing to rely on God in our discouragement, in our pain, in our life where we feel that we are not worthy. We have been deprived of things. But God is in control. Remember, God is in control and He gives us touch. He is gracious, practical, personal and purposeful touch. God has a plan for your life. I don't know what situation you are going through, but I understand. And I believe strongly that God will bring to fulfillment His plan and purposes for your life. He is interested in you as individual personally. Your personal needs. It's not just community and things, but He's interested in you personally. Jesus Himself was interested personally in each individual. We see in the New Testament, I don't have much of a time now left, we will see, he went through Samaria, just to meet one lady, one lady who needed salvation. He met her at Jacob's well and interacted with her personally. He called Jacques personally in saw last week. He was interested in Jacques, a tax collector, personally he called him. I want to come and stay in your home. That woman confessed and what happened? Whole lot of people in Samaria accepted and came to know of Christ. The greatest is there is discourse with this woman like Jesus says God is looking for people who would worship him in truth. The spirit and truth. God wants us to worship Him in His spirit and truth. That's what exactly we are to do. And when we do that, in our spiritual realm, when we are high or we are low, God is still in control. God gives us touch. Jezebel thought she would kill the man of God, but that was not to happen. Why? Because God is in control. Shall we pray? He is in control of your situation. He is in control of your life. He takes care. Are you willing to submit to Him? Obey Him. He will provide food 